Hello everyone, this is Swetha Tulathar from Duke's Online Study and today I am going to give you my presentation on Introduction to Administrative Law, Sources of Administrative Law and Principles of Administrative Law. Background of Administrative Law State exercises its sovereign power through its laws. Law is definite rule of conduct and human relations. It is formulated will of the state backed up by sovereign power which is coercive. Thus, law is applicable equally to all the people of the state. Every violation of law is punished by the state. So sources of laws law are custom, religion, moral and morality, legislation and delegated legislation, judicial decisions, equity, and scientific commentaries. Administrative law is a branch of public law that governs administrative agencies of the government. It deals with decision-making of administrative units of the government, example, tribunals, boards, or commissions, police law, international trade, taxation, manufacturing, etc. are part of administrative law. Administrative law governs or controls the exercise of powers and duties by public authorities. It governs the relationship between civil servant and state and lays down the relation between the civil servants and the state. According to Enver Jennings, administrative law is law related to the administration it determines the organization's powers, duties of the administrative authorities. According to H. W. R. Wade, administrative law is the law concerned with the control of governmental power and general rules concerned with administration. It states, state is a legal person. All institutions are established on the basis of law. All authority is instituted by law. No authority can exceed their limitation and if they violate their with jurisdiction, it has to be provided with remedy. Herman Feiner has expressed that the state is continuously managed by vast bodies of professional expert servants who contribute like their technical assistance to the foundation by law and to whom powers have been given. Generally speaking, there are two types of administrative law and they are rules and regulations, which are policies that order how and how a law is to be used and administrative decisions which are issued by government agencies and compels to implement those rules and regulation. So generally citizens express three things and they are uh, security from crime, terrorism and violence, equality and equity in terms of basic needs and efficiency and accountability in administration. Such things can only be secured by administrative law based on constitution, acts, and rules of law. And sources of administrative law. There are two sources of administra administrative law and they are primary sources and secondary sources. Primary sources uh, consist of sources that state the actual law. These sources compel state officials to apply and follow follow and some of these uh, sources are constitution acts and statutes ordinance precedent delegated legislation executive orders and administrative practices similarly we similarly we have secondary sources which are law which consist of sources that explain criticize discuss or help locate primary law um, unlike primary sources of law, it, it's not a compulsion to be followed by administrative officials. These sources of administrative law become law only after getting approval from legislative power. Some of the uh, sources of administrative law are expert opinion, international treaties, agreement, declaration and commitment, reports of various committee and commission, and legal maxims and principles. Constitution all branches of government, that is, legislative, executive, and judiciary derive powers from the Constitution, and Constitution has paramount position among all laws of the nation. It's not just a primary source of administrative law, but also, also another, other national laws which emanate 
through the constitutional mandate, constitutional law deals with the right and administrative law lays emphasis on public need. Constitution clearly provides the provision about the delegated or subordinate legislation, administrative tribunals, and the CIAA. Acts and Statute An act is a written law and statute is an act of legislature. It is formally ordained or passed by the legislative power of a state. Acts and statutes passed by legislature are important sources of administrative law because they elaborately detail the powers, functions, and modes of control of several administrative bodies. The French administrative law is entirely statutory laws and administrative law of England is almost like legislation enacted by the parliament. The Civil Rights Act 1956, Local Administration Act 2028, the Administrative Procedure Regulating Act 2013, and CIAA Act 2048 are some of the important sources of administrative law. Ordinance Ordinance is a rule or law enacted by local government is a decree or law promulgated by a state or national government without the consent of the legislature, such as for raising revenue through new taxes or mobilization of resources during an emergency or threat. For example, local law such as zoning ordinance enacted by governing body or of city or municipality which applies only within its boundaries and ordinance must not be in conflict with higher law such as state or national law or constitutional provisions to have full force and effect of law. Precedent A precedent is an earlier event of or action that is regarded as an example or guide to be considered in subsequent similar circumstances. It is a uh, principle or rule established in a previous legal case that is either binding or, or uh, persuasive for a court for the other tribunal when deciding subsequent cases with similar issues or facts. It is also called judge-made law. Some administrative laws are made mandatory by the mandate of the court, directive order and order of court. There are many countries in the world where these sources are taken as the major sources of administrative law of their respective countries. Pursuant to Article 116 of Interim Constitution of Nepal 2063, the precedent uh, rendered by the Supreme Court remains as equal status of other statu statutory laws. Delegated Legislation Delegated or subordinate or subsidiary legislation refers to those laws made by persons or bodies to whom Parliament has delegated lawmaking authority. They are main, made by the executive or ministers and apply to the general population. In Nepal, the delegated legislation are made by Ministry of Councils and Ministers, public bodies or corporations, local bodies, judges, and gov government departments, and legislature. The delegated legislation is controlled procedurally by constitution, recommendation or approval and publication. Delegated legislation contains many administrative details necessary to ensure that the provisions of the act will operate successfully. Regulations and statutory rules are the most common forms of delegated legislation. Executive Orders Executive order is a rule or order issued by the president or an executive branch of the government and having the force of the law. It's an official document through which a prime minister or president directs the governmental, uh, that is, executive agencies. Administrative practices. Administrative practices are practices carried out by the public administrators or bureaucrats. They are better aware about things actually faced while carrying out administration than policy makers from political fields. Their suggestions and recommendations based on uh, their experience are of great help for shaping administrative law. Now here I present you with uh, secondary sources of 
uh, administrative law and first is expert opinion. An expert is a person who is a specialist in a subject, often technical, who may present his or her expert opinion without having been a witness to any occurrence related to the lawsuit or criminal case. The scholarly writings, journals, opinions, conceptions, and law academics are great secondary source of law. The legal scholars, jurists, and law professors usually pay their considerable time for the development of jurisprudence and constitutionalism. Some expert opinions like A. B. Dicey's Rule of Law, Montesquieu's Separation of Powers, Rossius' Social, con uh, social Contract Theory, Plato's Republic, and Aristotle's Politics are said to be important sources of administrative law. Uh, international Treaties, Agreements, Declaration, and Commitment A treaty is an agreement on the international law entered into by actors uh, in international law, namely sovereign states and international organizations. A treaty may also be known as an international agreement, protocol, covenant, uh, convention, pact, or uh, exchange of letters, among other terms. Administrative law being a part of national law cannot remain away from the impact of terms and conditions of international treaties, agreement, declaration, and commitment made with other countries. Reports of various committee and commissions. The reports submitted by various instituted committee consist of suggestions to enact legislation before parliament. The legislation shall be enacted in accordance with the reports of those committees. All Souls College and Justice has submitted a report on administrative reform which remains as source of British administration law. Likewise, reports of administrative committee organized for uh, conduction and control administration in the line with legal system. In context of Nepal, the report of the Royal Law Reform Commissions of 2040, Butch Commission of 1952, Vedananda Cha Administrative Reform Commission of 1968 are prominent source of administrative law in Nepal. Legal Maxims and Principles a legal maxim is an established principle or propositions of law in Western civilizations and a species of amorphism and general ma ma maxim. The use of maxims be in deciding doubt and uh, helping soundness of judgment, but further in gracing argument, in correcting unprofitable subtlety, and reducing the same to a more sound and substantial sense of law in reclaiming vulgar errors and generally in the amendment in some measures of the very nature and complexion of the whole law. So here are some of the sources of uh, administrative law in Nepal and they are Pradhan Yayadish in 2008, Sarvocha Adalit in 2013, Nagrik Adhikar in 2012, Prashtachar Niyam Sambandhi in 2017 and Nijamati Seva in Principles of Administrative Law Principles are abstract which are taken as basic rules that gives reasoning about what is to be done. Principles of Administrative Law focuses on showing limitations to rights or to do any act beyond jurisdiction of public officials. Principles of Administrative Law are as follows. Public authority may not act outside its power that ultra buyers. Public authority or officials are to consider about limitations, principles, and process of using their rights. Their power will be dismissed if they act beyond their power violating citizens' rights. Provisions of effective remedy to people against the public authority. Administrative law has been developed to protect citizens' rights and welfare from misuse of public authorities. There is provision for providing for such maladministration by the state. In context of Nepal, we have Commission for Investigation for Abuse of Authority which provides remedy to those officials misusing their authorities. Check abuse or dethronement of administrative power. The main objective of administrative law is to control the misuse of public authority by public officials. Public authorities exercise, exercise rights related to dispute settlements. 
formulation of laws and regulations, policies as well as executive or administrative right of their implementation. Administrative law controls misuse of authority through administrative, political and legal process. Ensure impartial decision to the citizens during their disputes with officials. This is in ensured through principles of natural justice, ombudsman system, and judicial review. Protect the people from unauthorized encroachment of their rights and interests. There has been an establishment of ombudsmen and agencies like courts to protect and preserve citizens' life, freedom, property, etc. Make public officials accountable to people. Accountability for the exercise of public power lies at the heart of democratic government. Mechanisms for uh, should be developed for uh, political and legal accountability. There should be transparency in activities of public officials related to public administration. Citizens' charters and public hearing is an example of being accountable towards the people. Protect from harassment of public authority by busybodies and cranks. Public officials may face many barriers and obstacles while carrying out administration. In such cases, judicial reform can be made and applied. Judicial reforms are based on what is right. So, it was a pleasure for me to share my knowledge via a TUS online study channel. More of the educational videos are on the way, so do press like button, share button, and subscribe button. And do leave your valuable comments in comment box so, so that it would help us to improve our weakness and maintain better sides of us. So, thank you.